What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ. I am back, dusted off the computer momentarily for a little uh, ranting and raving about the Dylan Strome trade. As many of you know, Dylan Strome and Brandon Perlini were traded from the Arizona Coyotes to the Chicago Blackhawks in exchange for Nick Schmoltz last night. And as president of the Dylan Strome fan club, uh, I've got some thoughts on the matter. You know, obviously Dylan Strome hasn't delivered on the promise that made him the number three overall pick in the 2015 draft. We can all admit that. Uh, six points in 19 games this year with the Coyotes. But, you know, and honestly, maybe if you played for a team that wasn't the area Otters and didn't put up video game numbers, maybe he goes seven or eight in the draft, probably better fit for him. Probably shouldn't have gone ahead of Mitch Marner anyway, but whatever. I digress. But I think you look at, it, all right, you know what? Entered the league as, or entered the draft process as someone who was compared to Jonathan Taves, who's now his teammate, and Andre Kobe Todd. Honestly, Probably not that, but, you know, if he ends up being a Ryan Johansson type, which I think is his upside right now, I think you're going to take that every day of the week. You know, he's got that kind of, you know, upside to him, got the size, got the vision, got the two-way acumen, and, uh, you know, again, just, I think a guy that you can really have in a top six role, be a top three-line center on a really, really good team, and the fact that he's still only 21 fucking years old, and last year between the... Uh, regular season and playoffs in the AHL. I believe he had 61 points, 59 games. Not bad. So, you look at that, and you look at what Schmoltz is. I like Schmoltz as a player. I liked him coming out of um, the USHL, out of the Green Bay Gamblers. I liked him at the University of North Dakota. But I think right now he kind of is what he is. No, Really no different really than Strom. I think obviously he's matured earlier, um, if you will. But I think Schmoltz is a 60-point guy in the right situation. And I think Strom, at best, is a 70-point guy in the right situation. I'm not giving up on a 21-year-old. That was a third overall pick in the draft three fucking years ago. I'm sorry. She's not happening. And, you know, I know Blackhawks fans want to malign Stan Bowman, and for all the right reasons. I mean, he kind of royally fucked up the uh, Quenville situation. But when you add a guy like this, and let's not leave out the fact that Perlini had 31 goals over a two-year stretch as a 20 and a 21-year-old. Obviously, only four goals in the season, but... I think in the right situation, he can be a very impactful team, that Blackhawks team, and the impactful player. I'm a little rusty. Um, but again, I, I love this deal for the Blackhawks. I mean, maybe Schmoltz helps the Coyotes a little more right now than Strom or uh, Strom or Pelini would. But it's like the Coyotes are competing in the Stanley Cup right now. You know, let's let's look, be realistic here. And the Blackhawks have, you know, kind of diminished their pipeline. They're looking to replenish it. And, you know, when you add a 21 and 22-year-old who were both, you know, pretty high picks not that long ago, you know, you got to take advantage of it. And, again, I like Strom's vision, and I think he's a change of scenery guy. Really, in a weird way, and I, I liked this deal for the Coyotes at the time, but obviously I didn't see it working out as well for Montreal as it has, but the, the Domi deal, Domi needed a change of scenery. Look what he did. So now my next question is, why do all these players need change of scenery from Arizona? And then when they get that change of scenery, end up putting up career years. You know, really blossoming the potential they showed as high draft picks. So... That's uh, that's my question right now. Bottom line, I love the stuff of the Blackhawks. I think when you can add a guy like Dylan Strom, again, Schmoltz, not a scrub, but I still believe in Dylan Strom as a 70-point Ryan Johansson type center. And I'm sorry if that you know doesn't fit everyone else's Dylan Strom as a bust. Hot takes, and uh, I like Perlini. I think Perlini could be a 20 goal guy in the right situation, 20 goal power forward in the right situation. So now. To change the conversation towards my beloved Bruins, I want to know why Don Sweeney didn't pull the trigger on a deal like this. The Bruins are a fucking mass shooting right now, and anytime you're going to add a guy like Strom and his upside, you should try to. I mean, how much of a difference is there between Nick Schmoltz and Danton Heinen? Obviously, Schmoltz is a better player, but if they offer the Coyotes Heinen and shit, Donato for Strom and Perlini, I'd do it if I was Sweeney. I don't know if the Coyotes would. I don't know if the Coyotes would want back and in or one of the other guys. But honestly, you've got guys that have that kind of upside. And I like Donato a lot. I think he's going to be a 30-goal guy. I like Heinen a lot. I think he's one of the more underrated players in the league, even as a youngster. He's not having a great year right now. But I think for the most part, he's showing he can be a, you know, a contributor on a really good team. But, you know, I'll tell you, you know, Strom has a long-term... I don't want to say Bergeron replacement, because obviously you don't just replace Patrice Bergeron, but learning from a guy like that and being able to kind of ease his way into a really, really good team, real good situation, I think would be great. And I kind of ticked Sweeney didn't. I, I don't know what the deal was. 
But, you know, given how banged up the Bruins are, if you're going to add a guy like Estrom with, for both the short-term and long-term, you know, I, I don't know why uh, they didn't do that. But going a step further with uh, Sweeney and kicking the tires on lottery picks that have fallen out of favor and, you know, with the teams that drafted them. Right now, if I'm Sweeney, I am going really hot to draw it for Jesse Puyarvi. Um, You know, I think that situation is combustible, and I think Peter Shirelli's dumb enough to trade him for a short-term you know, veteran. I'm not saying he'd trade up a bag, so obviously I'm not that fucking delusional. But, you know, there's a deal to be made. And I think Puyarvi, if you get him out of that out of that dumpster fire at Edmonton, be a really good NHL player. And he's still only 20 years old. And, I mean, these guys keep just giving up on too soon. And I really, going back to Strom, I feel like Arizona really gave up on him. And probably wasn't using him correctly. But, you know, there's a reason Arizona's one of the worst teams in the league. Um, right now, despite having two seasons of, you know, off-season additions, um, two off-seasons worth of, you know, somewhat big-name additions, whether it's a Derek Stepan or a Jarmusson or, or a Galchenyuk. But, you know, right now, if I'm the Bruins, my young, high draft pick in a bad situation, I'm going out to his, after his PRB, you know, there's, there's an old joke about, or not joke, it's actually a real situation, you know, Couples in troubled relationships will get pregnant to try to fix it, and unfortunately never fixes it. Surely it's that couple that will move a high-end prospect like a Yamamoto or a Puyarvi to add a veteran because he thinks to, you know, kind of rectify the situation in Edmonton. I can just that the best thing to change the situation in Edmonton is to get rid of Peter Shirelli. That's neither here nor there. Um, but, you know, if you can take advantage of stupidity, I mean, it's the same guy that gave up Taylor Hall for Adam Larson one for one, and gave up Jordan Eberle for another member of the Strom family one for one, so... You know, if I'm Sweeney, that's the guy I'm looking at right now is Booyah because I think, again, in the right situation, I, I look at his game, and, you know, going back three years, he was rated ahead of line A going into that draft. Obviously, a lot has changed, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'll try to post more, guys. I, I feel bad, but it's been a busy uh, couple couple months in CJ land. So, anyway, that's all. I got some sort of the power play with CJ. Stay tuned for more episodes for the season and beyond. Later, guys.